Kevin here with Factotum Jack Home Repairs and today we are putting in one of these Mr. Heater 20,000 BTU ventless blue flame natural gas heaters. Got an old gate valve here. We got to replace the valve, put in a new shutoff valve, and then we'll run our supplies connector, mount this thing to the wall. So this is kind of mounting and then changing a valve in our video here today. So we're going to start by hanging our ventless heater. Right through this because every heater is a little bit different and you always want to just double check your specifications on it. We're going to mount this heater based on these specifications. So we're going to grab our tape measure. We want to put this in a place where it is no more than 10 inches away from combustible surfaces, walls, things like that. Guys are more than three inches above the ground. Also want it to reach our gas line. Grab one of these whips real quick. Take a look. As the crow flies, we should be perfect. So, let's plan on mounting it right there. So they send you with a mounting bracket. So with the bracket mounted on there, 12 and a quarter inches up to the back of this lip right here. So if we say we want the top of our heater there, we go down 12 and a quarter inches to the bottom of our mounting bracket. So, once you figure out where you're putting it, put one of the screws into the wall. You know, leave her a little loose there. If you leave that screw loose, you can adjust the position on your level to make sure your bracket's level. Throw another screw in there. You're only going to need two screws on it temporarily just to make sure it looks how you want it to look. And there's little tabs in the back that just kind of flap into place. Our whip's going to fit. We'll check our measurement. Put your remaining screws back in. And she's going nowhere. Put our heater up on the wall, it doesn't go anywhere, throw our level on it, she's looking level, works for me. Now the appliance connector we bought for this particular job, we bought the appliance connector at the local plumbing supply store, and they came with these two flared fittings to half inch female threads. The bottom of our, our new ventless heater takes a 3 8 inch fitting, and it's female, so we needed a nipple, we got a inch and a half, three-eighths inch nipple. We got a bushing, it takes us from the three-eighths to the half inch, and that flares us down, that flare fitting, and we pretty much put it all together like that. So for those of you who have never done this before, you're going to need yourself some pipe dope and a couple of crescent wrenches. You're also going to want to use a piece of plastic or something in your work area in case you have nice countertops or something like that. Now I always buy the little bit more expensive pipe dope. This stuff is oxygen rated, so um, oxygen takes a tighter seal, things like that. So you start by putting your bushing on, get a nice healthy coating on it, and then thread that into our bushing. Then you're going to grab your two crescent wrenches, and you're just going to tighten those two together nice and snug. Dope up your 3 8 inch nipple and tight. So that's ready to go into our furnace. As I said earlier, we got to replace that shutoff valve. We're going to get this prepped as well. Dope up our half inch, 2 inch nipple. You can go into our flared fitting for the appliance connector. Soak the crap out of that, and then we're going to thread on our new shutoff valve. I always like to exercise my valves before they get installed. And then we are going to take our crescent wrenches and we are going to tighten these down together. Ready, tighty, lefty, loosey tight as we can get them. Take a minute clean your fittings off. Now that you got your fittings prepped for both into the furnace and into where we're putting our new shut off, we're going to leave those for a minute, come back over here to our furnace. So, you know, pull her back off the wall. You're going to thread in one of these fittings. It's everywhere. That 3 8 inch fitting is going to go right in there. Take one of our crescent wrenches and tighten all this, that whole nipple down, both sides of it, by tighten it in like this. As one ends up starting to tighten up, it'll shift to the weaker, the one that isn't as tight, and then it'll jump back and forth a few times as we tighten it in there. You don't want to tighten it too hard because you don't want to break the gas control valve that's in there. And she's good to go. She's nice and snug. She's ready to go up on the wall. I'm going to do this cord. There's a switch here on the back for the blower fan. It's on the off position, but there's a Manual towards the top, off on the center, and auto on the bottom. And we are going to, yeah, 
manual, off, and auto. And we'll set that once we plug that in later. And you can re usually typically reach them from behind the furnace. Our cord just dangle right there. Now, what we're going to have to do on our next part of this is we're going to need to turn the gas off running over here. So, we're going to take a trip down to the basement, see if we can find a shut off local. Otherwise, we'll have to shut off at the meter. It makes a little more work for us because we'll probably have to relight the pilots on anything else that this run is attached to. I traced the shut off to this line right here. I just turned her off, soap the fitting, make sure she doesn't leak or anything, and uh, we're headed back upstairs. So, we've shut that off in the basement. I'm going to open this. Smell a smidgen of gas as you let the pressure off because the gas is kind of just hanging out in there. No pressure right now. We cut the supply off to it. Lock our pipe wrench on there as backup and set on crescent to remove this fitting. So we just put backup on there. We unthreaded this right here. A lot of crap. These old gate valves, they have a tendency to stay shut or stay open. So that is junk. And this happens to actually be a 3 8 inch line. So luckily we had an extra one of these half inch bushings. So typical gas lines are half inch. So what we're going to do is we're just going to thread this, this bushing onto this shut off that we built. Now flip the pipe wrench around and just dope that 3 8 fitting, that 3 8 inch pipe sticking out of the ground. We got our bushing in place. And we are going to town. I want to make sure it's tight, but also that our shutoff is in a reachable position. We'll clean up our fittings. Pipe opal. You're supposed to stay flexible and keep corrosion off, things like that, so the threads stay intact so you can reuse these fittings later on if something needs to be changed or modified. Um, and, and you know, over time it is going to harden, um, but you're not down here touching as long as out of the, the average user who's going to be using that shutoff right there. So, we just tighten that down with a crescent wrench, put our whip on one side of it, make sure our shutoff valve is in the off position. She's on there. And we are going to go back down to the basement and turn that back on. All right, so we got to turn back on in the basement. And uh, the same way we turn it off, you're going to want to be very delicate because these old ones can break, these old shutoffs. And then you're going to want to re-soap it just to make sure. Now we've got her in the off position. We are going to soap our fitting, look for bubbles. I don't see any, which is good. It means we don't have any gas leak. What we're going to do is we are going to fashion our appliance connector. And the man the appliance connector is loosely on the bottom of that. Tighten her up, hand tight, and then get your wrench adjusted to size. I'm going to keep my sniffer over here. Cracker. As soon as you smell gas, tighten it right back up. Alright, now that we've got the gas on and she's tight, we are going to go under here and you're going to soap the fittings going into the gas control valve. You're going to soap your appliance connector. Soap our flare fittings. Making sure we don't have any gas leaks before we leave here today. Soap the top past the shut off. We're going to plug this in now. We've got gas. We bled the gas so there's not too much air in the chamber. The instruction manual told us there's a battery. And the battery came with this model. So follow your instructions. Screw that back down and it sparks. Okay, so now we'll change it from off to pilot. Depress the pilot. You'll hear the gas hissing. Depress the pilot. There it hissing. You're going to have to wait a second for the natural gas to go through the valve. There we go. Moved all the air out of it. The air is pushed out. Natural gas is ignited. Wait a second for the thermal couple or thermal pile to recognize the pilot flame is there. After it hits a certain temperature, it will click. Your pilot will remain running. Let go of the pilot supply and it stays lit. Now for the trial run. Um, we'll flip the switch in the back. As we said earlier, the up was manual. So you hear the fan automatically kick on for auto versus off or manual. So auto, once it reaches a certain temperature, the fan should kick on. We'll set it on one and the burner kicks on and the pilot ignites the burner. Kick it on two, three, or up to five. 
you're going to notice some bad smells. It's just the packing oil, um, it'll, and it will it'll eventually burn off of there within 10 minutes or so. So we're going to crank her up real high. It'll give us the opportunity to test the fan. And a few other options like the thermostat, and we'll kick off. We'll turn her down, and she should kick off on her own. Depending on the model, some models won't. It's just based on the, the model that you bought. This thing's been running. It stopped stinking. At a certain point, it'll get warm enough where the fan will kick on and start blowing that heat around. But when you want to disable this thing, obviously it'll shut off on its, it's supposed to shut off on its own, I believe this model does. But once you, if you're not in use, or when it's, when it does shut off, it's going to drop down to just the pilot. And so we're going to leave it on pilot. Well guys, I'm Kevin with Factotum Jack Home Repairs. Thanks for watching today. We installed a new shutoff, installed a new ventless heater. Got her all set up and ready to go. So, again, I'm Kevin with Fact Totem Jack Home Repairs. Subscribe to our channel and keep posted for upcoming videos.